All right, lads. So today we're going to be servicing the Corsa. I'm going to try and do like an ultimate guide. The inspection light's on, so I know it's time to service, as well as I have an app uh, which monitors my servicing intervals, and it stays remaining, but the car's inspection lights come on first, so I'm just going to service it now. Right, so, let's order the parts. So, you want to type, type in your registration plate, so there's mine, so that'll be a Corsa D1.2 litre, it's going to suggest filters based on your reg, so it should be correct. I'm going to trust you, Aero Car Parts, and I'm going to get the Crossland filter correct, so I just add that to basket. Oh, and that's 5 litres, which is just about enough. So this is the inspection light I was on about. So the engine's on, warming up, so that'll be easier to drain the oil. Um, I'm just going to leave it for probably two minutes or something. Makes the oil a bit thinner. So as I said, we'd begin with jacking up the car. So you come down here, the sill here is the jacking point for the Corsa. So you want to put the uh, jacking point, uh, jacking head on the sill, and you jack from there. And also that's the position of the axle stand all gone there. Do not put it on this part. This part is incorrect and it will actually buckle in. You can also jack on the subframe just there. I usually tend to use that and put the uh, axle stand on the, the sill, that works. For my oil drain, drain procedure, I use a washing up bowl, <laughs> I, it's specifically for this as you can tell, and you'll need a T45 Torx bit and your ratchet. I'm sure many of you have seen oil draining before but crack it loose, like that, and obviously have your container underneath. Just gonna use my fingers. Come on, Thomas, we can do this. We can do this without dropping the plug. Here we go. It's the plug. So we'll just leave that for five minutes to drain down. It's quite a lot of oil, it's quite oh shit. <laughs> now for the oil filter. So that's a 24 mil bit. So you want to remove your little o-ring, which is just here, like that, and take that off. Ready for a new one, but I like to clean it all up inside first, so get a paper towel and clean it all up. Now for the replacement, so I've got a crossland filter, open her up. First things first is the o-ring, take o-ring. Stretch it over so you have that little groove here. Like that. So then it sits nicely in there. Just run your fingers around like that. And there's a bit of oil what I didn't remove from inside. Take it and just run a bead around. It's just so it's not dry. There we go, like that. Right, so fitting it back in. You just want to push it back in like that then use your fingers to thread it back onto the threads there we go all back on now that needs to be tightened to 25 newton meters Castrol recommends 0W30 for a Corsa D1.2 it's better in the winter but provides the same protection viscosity uh, at operating temperature it takes three and a half liters of Corsa D so 1.2 so yeah let's fill it this guy's been dripping for a while now um, so I'm going to put the plug back in. It's benefit because it's got a bit of oil on there, so it'll uh, it won't go on dry. So I'm just going to put the plug in. Twist it on with your fingers, for God's sake. <laughs> there we go. That's all it needs. Not very tight, just just enough. Just going to wipe around the plug, just so it's so we know. If it's leaking or not, it won't be leaking, but just so you know. Remove the plug. Oh yeah, put oil all over the rock cover. Remove the dipstick first. It's already gone down, but I like to just check and wipe it, make sure. Don't want anything confusing us. Being resourceful and all that. 
got a Lenore, cut it in half and it's made a funnel. So I just pop that in there and begin filling carefully. Next part is air filter. So T25s, there's one, two, three, four of them. And there's the Jubilee clip to remove. Here's the cross on filter. So you just want to pop it in place like that. There we go, and then just put the cover back on, connect the Jubilee clip, and that's the air filter done. So it just connects on these little tabs in the corner. Like that. Let's run the, the uh, T25s down. Just using my finger because they're not particularly hard to put on. Now time for the coolant. So there is actually coolant drain which is located just here. However it doesn't work, it's plastic, it just rounds off. So we're going to be removing this hose clamp here. Clamp here is our next job to remove. It's going to be quite awkward to get to but here we go. Remove your cap, there we go, and you can see there's no coolant in there. I removed it because it sort of creates like an airlock, but I'm going to actually remove this and clean it because I always like to clean it all out and, you know, make it nice and pretty before I put it back in. I'm going to now remove this bolt here, 8mm rather. A little yank, it's got two little connectors at the back, what clip in, just pull it. Literally, all you have to do is remove these hose clamps and pull the hoses off. There we go. That's it removed. There we go, sorted. Oh, I've just dirtied up again. Uh, that sort of fits in ish. I'll have to keep hold of it though. Put the engine on, just carefully watch it and it'll burp the air out. But for now, I'm just going to slowly fill it up. There's actually a bleed nipple just here, that little Phillips down there. So you want to open that and it will release the air and once it's released the air the coolant will come out. You want to close the nipple when the coolant comes out. So we're going to start her up. There we go. Ring the cap, let it hurt the air as it heats up, the check for leaks as well at the same time. This has took a good while but the bubbles are finally coming up because the engine's coming up at operating temperature. So we've got to reset the inspect light. So you've got to hold down this button, then turn the ignition on and just keep holding until it flashes inspect or something like that. Now to inspect the spark plugs, slide this cover off like that. Then T27s, whack them off as well as the plug, what's well, just here. Okay. 
now this plug here There we go. So you'll need a spark plug socket, which is a 16mm and an extension bar. I'm going to start from the left. Because it's a spark plug socket, it should have the little rubber in the end, but if it doesn't, long nose pliers, grab them out. The plugs are in really good condition, so I'm just going to put a tiny little dab of anti-seize on there. Like literally the smallest dab, just there, and reinstall. And I'm going to repeat the process for every single one of them. Then we'll look at the ignition coil. As you can see, this one's actually split um, after inspecting it a little bit more. Um, we have a few, few replacements here, what we can put on. Um, and this one is actually torn just just there so we're going to replace it with these ones what we have spare um, I had to go and get them from another coil because Vauxhall don't actually sell them separately I've can just change them over and these currently are alright so I'm just going to change these two alright so you just want to rotate and pull it up Carefully though, because you don't want to go yank it on that part. There we go, that's that off. Now our replacement. There we go. Let's make sure it's on properly. It's flush with all the rest of them, like that. And this one will take off as well, since we have a spare. Carefully though. You can, if you feel the rubber, it just feels sort of worn. Now to just check the rest of the car to make sure it's all sound. Next what you want to do is pull the wheel right out. And you want to inspect the boot. This is the CV boot, so just rotate the wheel around, and inspect, and as you can see there's no tears. And you want to have a look at all the flex lines and the brake hoses. They're all fine. Inspect the brake line for rust. Then you want to inspect the rubber boot on the stabilizer link. That looks perfectly fine. And then inspect the other boot there. And you also want to inspect the tie rod. However, you can do that by rotating it the other way. We'll just come in here and have a look at the tie rod and that looks perfectly fine they usually split underneath just there but that's fine and you just want to generally spin the wheel around see if you hear any knocks or anything push back and forward as you can see you can't hear anything and you want to repeat this for the other side and you just want to have a look around no cracked springs or anything the springs fine have a look up here Lift the dust cover up. Can you see any leaking fluids or anything? In fact, I can actually see it's a little bit, a little bit wet there. However, that could just be from uh, road grime. So I just keep an eye on that. So you want to write that down. Um, pull the boot back down. There you go. Then we'll go and repeat this for the other side. You also want to inspect the lower control arm, and I can see that the rubber is actually worn here, just there. So that could do with getting replaced, however, it was like that at the MOT, so I did know that, and it still passed, however, it's good to know to get it replaced. At the back, you want to check the rear drums, and through that little plug there, if you remove that, you can check that the shoes are actually fine. In this case, I know that they are, because I've changed them and I've also changed the wheel cylinder you want to check the struts for leaking which they're pretty dry any mistings of oil check the coils on the rear and you just want to look round generally for corrosion and check the exhaust system whilst you're up here as you can see mine's new so it's perfectly fine 
you want to work your way around and look at the fuel tank, see if there are any leaks or anything, see if anything's wet, and if you can smell fuel. But in this case, it's perfectly fine. Often overlooked in servicing are the locks and the brackets and hinges. And you want to just apply a bit of WD-40 or any other lubricant. Like so. You also want to check the brake fluid and that's fine. Check the ABS pump lines for any wear, corrosion. As you can see they're fine, follow them round. Check the hoses for any holes, worn rubber, they'll feel fine. And you want to follow it round, check all the lines. And just check for general wear and tear. If you look underneath here, you want to inspect the battery terminals. They're both corrosion free, so that's all good. You also want to check the hydraulic hose for any leaks, which connects to the clutch. And any leaks down there, that's fine. And that should do it for the underbonnet checks. Now to check the lights. So you click the hazard on to check the indicators. We've just got the lights turned on. So we've just got the ignition on and you're going to want to push the high beam forward using the stalk. Go around. Check that the lights work. They do. Check the side repeater works, that does. Check the indicator there, and for the bulb quality, that works. Check the lights, that's on, that's on. And the high beam's working. And you just want to work your way around the vehicle. And as you can see, the all function perfect. And don't forget the rear reverse light, which is usually only on one side, and in my case, it's on one side. You also want to check the wiper condition. It's overlooked many times and run your finger around and that seems fine.